everyone and welcome to Learn TV again for a new episode. My name is Mimi and today we will talk about a new topic, the war of talents and how to acquire and retain talents in organizations. Our guest today is Hanan Ibrahim, an expert in talent development, SHL certified assessor and a career coach. Currently she is working as a director of talent development, performance and rewards and today she will give us some insights on the new topic. She will share with us a wide range of ideas on what organizations can do in order to find and retain good talent, even in times of disruption. Hanan, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much. Pleasure is all mine. Let's start with a big question. Are we born with talents or are they acquired through effort and development? It's a perfect question and people have been studying this question for so long. Actually, we, were, we, were, we are born with different level of motivation, desire and achievement. The, the, the trick here is the ability of the individual to discover what really motivates him or her and how can he develop the ability in order to transfer it into talent. So basically, we are all born with different sets of capabilities that we can, with the help of others and our organizations, transform those capabilities into acquired talents. Better talent is worth fighting for. What are your insights on this statement? What should companies do to improve their recruitment processes and make sure that they're giving their best in the battle to find and recruit better talent? That's a very good question, actually. Uh, we are in a talent war just because people are fighting uh, together without really identifying what are the strategies of acquiring and retaining those talents. Uh, if you can share, uh, if you can look at the different uh, uh, periods where organizations pass through, you will identify that they do not need the same talents all the time. So the trick here is to really identify which type of talents that you really want for this period. Like, for example, do you really want to focus on the talents who are the core of the main industry or product that you're working in? Or are you looking for, looking for talents who are willing to lead your organization for the next transformation phase that you are in? So once you identify what are really the talents that you're looking for, they will not be necessarily the same talents who are other organizations fighting for. So the problem is, number one, to identify who are the talents. Number two, are you as an organization ready are you ready to acquire and retain talent? Sometimes organizations, when they are fighting for talents, they lose the focus of what they have really inside. And that becomes a really a major problem. They become repellers for talents inside the organization. And they keep focusing on how to get talents from other competitors or from other different uh, industries, and they lose effort and focus trying to get, to get those new talents on board. While if they really keep an eye inside the organization, they will find that they have very, very eligible talents that just need uh, more attention and more uh, uh, focus to appear as talents. A small team of talented employees can contribute more compared to a big team of averages. If organizations focus on recruiting only talents, what will happen to averages? Shouldn't we focus on training them in order to improve their skills and competencies? Again, that's a very good question. Now, uh, 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 an organization to be successful, they need to understand that employees all deserve attention and deserve to be developed. So number one, we need to understand that giving development opportunities for our employees not just benefit the performance of the employees towards the company, but it also, it also acts at, as a guidance for us as heading an organization to understand who are the talents inside the organization. Once you do this, by time, you will develop your average employees those who are ready and have the motivation and capabilities to become exceptional talents. So sometimes you actually need those average employees who are willing to learn and have the attitude of being talent because they will give more time and focus and energy to learning more. From those a pool of, of average employees, you can discover your exceptional talent as well. So combining both, 
you will have a great benefit. Ensuring that all your employees are developed in the capacity of the strategy that you're willing to apply inside the organization. And then you will have the capability of have a microscopic uh, view of the exceptional talent that you have from within. Sometimes you will find talent in the least place that you can imagine. So what are the advantages or disadvantages of recruiting talents rather than creating them? What would you personally suggest? We always depend on both. Again, uh, you are starting from the end, not from the beginning. The beginning here is the strategy. Where do you want to take your organization? Where do you want, what is your next five-year plan, 10-year plan, short and long term? What is your critical uh, roles? Do you have a proper succession planning in place? Now, the advantage of, of hiring talent from outside, provided that you did your exercise very, very well, is you infuse new blood, new ideas, and new mindsets in the organization. You know, nowadays they are discussing, it, it's used to have, uh, when you get uh, like head of department uh, uh, or a special, uh, for a special uh, position, so you'd always have people say, okay, uh, we, we need to have it from the same industry 10 or 15 years, so probably you get it from the competition. But nowadays, they are disrupting this mindset and they're saying, no, you'd rather have a person from a, a totally different industry, so he brings new things. If you get someone with the same background, the same experience in the organization, chances are he's going to copycat what he was doing previously in, a, in, in his company. But when you're getting someone with different mindset, different approach, different energy, then chances are you are getting new ideas. But then again, if you keep doing this, so across, and that would be your strategy, so you are risking losing your own talents who, are, who were built on the loyalty and the understanding of the core of your organization. So you are losing because those loyal people who are trusted, who work with you, who have been with you across different stages uh, that the organization has passed with, uh, if they leave you, so they get the experience and the focus and they take it outside. So what do we do? You mix. Again, it's a combination of doing both, really depending on having uh, 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 the talent development and management sitting at table with the strategic uh, 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 leadership of the company and really understanding where is the organization going and having a very clear decision whether we want to hire now from outside talent or we want to develop and appreciate our uh, internal talents. The great resignation is an existing trend of employees quickly shifting companies. What are the ways to retain top talent within the organization? Yes, we've been hit by this concept and we are really discussing the importance of uh, or the challenges that we're going to have because people now, especially amid COVID, are really re-evaluating their positioning in the organizations and whether or not it's really worth it that I keep spending my time and effort in this organization. So, uh, um, uh, again, <clears throat> uh, retaining talent is not an easy task. And it, it does not come uh, 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 in a matter of day or two. It really requires a very, very uh, appropriate study and investigation of what your people want, not just your people. It's the outside market wants. Listening to your people and really understanding their needs and motivation and never take anything for granted. Loyalty is not granted anymore. Uh, appreciating uh, uh, financials is not granted anymore. So what is granted is to ensure that you really listen to employees. In my organization, we have this as a priority. We really listen to our people. We, we engage them in our decisions. We, we, uh, we make sure that we whatever development aspects that we do or retention uh, pillars, whether it's financial or non-financial, is meeting the capacity of what we can do and what they need in comparison with what the, or the, the, the industry is having. Number two, and that's a really uh, interesting uh, recommendation, 
is think outside the box. We have stereotype for industries, for organizations, for countries, for genders. So again, what diversity and inclusion has been teaching us is that you need to really have an open mind and you think outside the box whenever you want to retain your employee. A minimum idea, tackling a family member for an employee could play an integral and important part in retain, retaining this employee. So my recommendation would be think outside the box, work hard to understand and listen to your employees, and then prepare an action plan of retention strategies that would compile everything, training, development, uh, rewards, benefits, endless opportunities, exposure, everything. Hanan, thanks for the elaboration. Do you think that we'll eventually go back to company loyalty or constant switching companies will become the new normal? Nothing is going to be back to normal anymore. That's a fact. Uh, and this fact has been uh, really discussed for the past couple of years since we were hit by COVID. Uh, but building on loyalty, no, that's an important uh, aspect. I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, hit a lot, although we're having um, uh, Gen Z uh, emerging and looking for enjoying the, the, the fast jump across organization. But then again, um, and I'm really talking uh, from experience and from a real application in my organization, one of the main aspects that we build our retention is the loyalty to the family environment that we have. So uh, uh, it is a factor that's not going to be hit, but it will not be a priority for everyone. Again, you can never have a one plan fits all. You will need to identify what is your criteria. So you would really want to have some of your talents in the organization appreciating the loyalty part and appreciating the fact that they would really enjoy staying in the company for so long. But then again, you will have another part of your talents who you would understand that they would, they would want to change. That's why companies with a wide range of um, exposure in terms of uh, expanding their uh, industries, their products, their locations across countries, their locations across the same uh, industries, opening opportunities between departments, those are the companies who are going to tackle effectively the loyalty part because you are going to give those who want to jump more because they want to change the opportunity to change, but again, within their organization. What can companies do to ensure company loyalty? Again, building on what I was saying, giving endless opportunities, working hard on providing different uh, career passes, like uh, 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 ensuring that people, when they join the organization, that they would, would see a map of opportunities. Like, for example, moving between department and another department, giving the opportunity to move around countries, to, to move around subsidiaries. So working hard to ensure that uh, uh, you match the motivation of change. Change, everyone wants to change at some point. Everyone wants to feel that they are uh, progressing across their career ladder or they're moving fast on their uh, uh, path of learning. So once you have this identified early on on their career, then you will have a loyalty aspect with your own employees. Hanan, in your opinion, what has changed in the talent acquisition process pre and post COVID? That's a very good question. Uh, to start with, People are now looking at different set of competencies for people who are being hired after COVID. So, for example, we're looking more, uh, looking more at people who are into change, uh, agile in mindset and thinking, willing to uh, reshuffle their position or location or uh, uh, having a, a high, very high commitment level. For example, if you're working in an organization who gives a remote uh, working uh, opportunity, um, again, uh, not on a good news for the people, for the candidates, but uh, organizations are re-investigating uh, um, the, the importance of having some roles 
and the importance of having it uh, full time uh, or part time. Uh, it's good news for those who want to uh, mix or balance their career and uh, and and personal life. But um, lots of things are being um, readjusted again uh, after COVID. From my uh, humble opinion, it's it's for the good and the positive because you can accommodate more people. Uh, you you would find people who are challenged in terms of time and maybe uh, the imbalance in their careers. They are more motivated now. Uh, they want to join companies who give the opportunity of having a uh, remote, rather full on-site uh, uh, opportunities. So um, a, a compensation accordingly is changing. So uh, because of this, so uh, organization might face a, a good uh, efficiency in terms of utilizing their manpower budget. So I think lots of changes Still not uh, everything uh, is settled because we're still actually uh, within the COVID. But again, in a in, in couple of years from now, I think we'll have a different acquisition strategy applied across different organizations and industries. Last but not least, given the post-COVID climate, what should HR's professionals be considering as they plan their talent management strategies for the future? Well, I think they have lots of uh, aspects to consider. For example, they need to consider a more practical um, assessments in terms of uh, considering the location and the remote work of the candidates being assessed, whether it's for recruitment or development. Uh, in enhancing a more detailed uh, competency requirements in terms of, like I said before, a new a new competence like agility and. Uh, um, uh, detail-oriented uh, commitment, motivation, um, um, readjusting the job descriptions and role profiles so people who are going to be working on a remote part would understand really their uh, uh, key performance indicators, their objectives, their existence, um, enhancing a more uh, user-friendly remote work environment where people are uh, more focused in results rather than focused on actual um, uh, documents and process uh, that would hinder, uh, that would be hindered due to um, the remote aspect. Also making sure to understand how the business is going to be changed and accordingly the, the emergent the emergent of the new roles that would serve the business and strategy. In 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 a in a nutshell, HR should be uh, uh, HR should have a chair and a place whenever strategy is changing or being implemented, so that they would accurately provide intense and efficient talent management and acquisition strategy, strategies for the organization. Thank you so much, Hanan. It was a pleasure to have you in our show today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being part of today's episode. We hope that you found it insightful. If there is something more that you want to hear from our experts, do let us know and we'll try to cover them in our next episodes. Don't forget to check us out on our Vimeo and YouTube channels for more content. Until next time, stay tuned.